Hi, I'm Adekpeju Adeshino, a graduate research assistant at the University of Minnesota School of Public Health. This is an hands-on activity describing routes of exposure of nanomaterials in products. I developed this activity along with Dr. Peter Rayner from the University of Minnesota. The objective of this activity is to illustrate the pathways through which the general public and workers are exposed to nanomaterials in products. To carry out this activity, you will need whiteboard or easel paper pads and markers of different colors. If using whiteboard, make sure to use erasable markers. Fourth, to describe the life cycle of nanotitanium dioxide particles used in sunscreens, create a life cycle map of nanotitanium dioxide. Consider releases of nanotitanium dioxide that may lead to worker and consumer exposures. Likewise, consider releases of nanotitanium to the natural environment. Important sources of titanium dioxide releases include titanium dioxide synthesis, master batch, sunscreen manufacturing, use, recycling, and end of life. Potential sources of exposure during titanium dioxide synthesis include packaging, handling, quality control, equipment cleaning, and waste. A potential source of exposure during master batch is accidental relics. Potential sources of exposure during manufacturing include charging or hardening, injection, mixing, or molding, thermal degradation, packaging, transport, and waste. Potential sources of exposure during sunscreen use include weathering, ultraviolet degradation, breakage, storage, and batting. Sources of end-of-life exposure include landfill, incineration, and recycling. Workers may be exposed to nanotitanium through titanium dioxide synthesis, master batching, and manufacturing activities. Consumers and their contacts may be exposed through use. Environmental releases may also result. Other sources of environmental releases include end-of-life activities like recycling, landfilling, and incineration. Indicate potential exposure pathways that are more probable than others by raising pathways as high, medium, or low. Here, professional and environmental exposures are rated high, consumer exposure is rated low to medium. Next, to describe the life cycle of nanoclay nanocomposite plastics used in automobiles, Create a life cycle map of nanoclay. You are welcome to create a simpler life cycle map. Here, I am creating a linear map. Consider releases of nanoclay that may lead to worker and consumer exposures. Also, consider releases of nanoclay to the natural environment. Important sources of nanoclay releases include extraction, transport, master batch, manufacturing, consumer use, and end-of-life activities. Potential sources of exposure during nanoclay extraction include mining, recovering, drilling, sanding, deformation, abrasion, cleaning tools, fires, and exposures. Potential sources of exposure during transport include accidents, packaging, and handling. Potential sources of exposure during master batch include pelletization, quality control, cleaning, packaging, and waste. Potential sources of exposure during manufacturing include extrusion, melting, injection or molding, welding, packaging, waste stream, handling, and equipment cleaning. Sources of exposure during consumer use include wear and tear, Shipping or scratching, weathering, repair or bodywork, thermal degradation, ultraviolet degradation. Sources of end of life exposure include recycling, crushing, shielding, weathering, landfill, and incineration. Indicate potential exposure pathways that are more probable than others by raising pathways as high, medium, or low. Here, extraction and manufacturing are rated high. Master batch and end of life are rated medium, transport and consumer use 
are rated low. This concludes the activity on route of exposure. Thank you for watching. This lesson has been created by the Midwest Emerging Technologies Public Health and Safety Training Program, MedFAST, which is a collaboration between the University of Minnesota School of Public Health, the University of Iowa College of Public Health, and Dakota County Technical College. The content of this lesson is solely the responsibility of the developers and does not necessarily represent the official views of the National Institute of Health.